Aha, uh -huh. so here I am in the studio and I thought to myself after a recent telephone conversation with my dad uh, trying to explain some things to him and him explaining to me what was broken on his truck. He lives in a different city and I'm trying to help him out fixing it and because he's fairly new to the hobby he wasn't able to identify some of the parts by their common terms which made it more difficult for me to troubleshoot over the phone and I thought this is a great opportunity to make a, a video for you guys especially uh, for for the newbies, a whole bunch of people have been getting trucks lately. The RC hobby has been exploding, uh, and I thought if I was able to easily identify some of these parts, it would probably help a whole bunch of people out there. Plus, when I was talking to my dad, it would make it a lot easier. So this is the Arma Kraton 1 8 scale, a basically bashing truck. Uh, my stock tires are on here looking new and beautiful, <laughs> crystal clear and clean. Uh, and guys, even if you are a senior hobbyist, please do not leave. I want you to watch this to the end. Maybe you can add something in the comment section. Uh, if people are new to the hobby and you're wondering about uh, different parts on a truck, please post it up down below. The only way we can help you is if you post up things and then, you know, we as a community have a chance to respond to you guys. So, I'm gonna get started right away. First off, look at this. This is called a radio. A lot of people call these remote control trucks, which technically is right. They are being controlled remotely from a different location. RC, which you've heard the common term of, is actually radio control. Because it's a radio signal, well, back in the AM, FM days, and now we've got the gigahertz days, uh, that was actually communicating between the receiver on the truck and the transmitter. So this is where it can get confusing for people because I thought you just said that this was called the radio. And technically, you're right. This is a pistol grip radio. That's the style of radio it is. It is not a dual stick radio, which we have. Bum, 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 bum. See, these are your standard dual stick radios. The pistol grip radio back here is transmitting a signal, all the inputs that we're giving. Here's the steering, just like if you're in a car, left and right. The trigger here is actually for forward motion, stopping, and then usually reverse. This is transmitting a signal to the receiver on board here, and everything is plugged into the receiver to execute commands given by the transmitter. Now, one more thing. This will mess you up completely. The transmitter, it can also be referred to as a TX. And the receiver can be referred to as an RX. So those three terms, radio, <laughs> remote control, uh, transmitter, or TX, I guess that makes four terms, all goes to the receiver that's inside this truck. Now that we understand how this communicates with this, let's talk about this truck. This top part here is actually a body shell. This is what people would refer to as a body, a body shell, uh, the cover, the top, the lid, whatever you guys call this. Um, you know, this is what actually usually helps protect the inside electronics of the vehicle. Okay. A lot of different body shells out there you can get. Uh, these, I believe, are polycarbonate. There's Lexan bodies out there, which are very thin plastic. Okay. These ones here, the reason they're uh, thin like this is because in the warm weather, they're very, very flexible and fairly inexpensive to manufacture, which helps keep the cost down on the trucks overall, in theory. <laughs> uh, which is true because, you know, a lot of things are super expensive and they've just found cheaper and cheaper ways to make things over time uh, and then giving it off to the customer but this is one of the reasons why a, a truck like this would come with a soft body is so when you land it upside down on its side you get other trucks you know banging into it it just simply bends and pops back into place whereas if you're over here check this one out this is for my trail truck this is an old Claud Buster body, and this is super hard plastic. If I landed on this upside down, it would simply shatter into a bazillion pieces. So I've got a couple of Kraton lids here that have been taking abuse, um, but you know, making films, I, I gotta say, both times in the cold, I haven't had any problems with this cracking. If I lift this off, but first I'm gonna show you these. Right here, a body pin, okay? This body pin goes through the post or the body post, and this is exactly how the body actually attaches to the whole frame. Now we're gonna get into that more in a moment. 
you can see that these uh, body pins have the pull tabs on them, plus they're actually attached to the Kraton lid. This means when you're out in the field and you put, you take all your pins off, you put them beside you and you lose them, not anymore because they're attached here, which is rather quite genius. Look at this. Don't just bash, blast. <laughs> the ultimate basher, one of them for sure. Um, one of the ways I make these stronger is I actually use a tape called Gorilla Tape. I don't have any with me now, but everybody who watches my show knows that I use a fiber tape on the inside to help give this some strength and kind of take away that plastic sound. It makes it more solid. Now here, look inside, okay? What a beautiful rig, very simple and very strong. Look how wide it is with a smaller chassis plate, okay? So here is almost like a motherboard on a computer. This is the main chassis plate down here that everything gets attached to. It's basically the platform when everything goes together. Now I'm gonna start at the back and just kind of move our way forward. <laughs> This back here, uh, for us, where I'm from, is called a wing. Uh, it's also called a fin. Now, I know a lot of people out there in the world are like, that's not a fin, a fin is on the front, and, and you're absolutely right. Different places in the world say things differently. Um, back here, a, a race wing totally works for me. I love that it's different stages and actually really does have an effect uh, on the vehicle. The reason a wing would be there is because the as you're going along, the wind is coming here, coming up, over the, the roof and actually helping keep the, uh, the, the wind pressure itself is actually pushing down the back of the vehicle, helping aid in traction. So that's very cool to know. Right down in front of it here, off the wing, where the wing is mounted, right on the wing mount, the wing mount actually comes straight through here into the rear chassis brace. This is a rear chassis brace, and you'll see a lot of people actually switch uh, chassis uh, braces like this out to aluminum to help remove any kind of uh, bend or warp in this area, right? Because as you come down from a jump, you don't want this thin plate to kind of give you like a little banana shape. <laughs> this is what that center brace is for. This here, you can see this, the, 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 the wing is attached to the center brace on this truck. The center brace is actually going straight Straight through the shock tower. This is the shock tower where the shocks are attached to the vehicle. This is on the top part. It's always the top of the shocks that are attached to the shock towers themselves. Now, just like on the back, the shock that's put here, this is an adjustable threaded shock that has a shock collar on it that you can adjust up or down on this threaded part to give you different uh, preloads on these springs. Normally you can get different springs on your, damper, on your dampers uh, or shocks overall, uh, depending, like if you wanted to have stiffer springs, you could either adjust the shock collar or you could get different th uh, thicker or thinner springs to help your suspension. A lot of people think that it's these springs that actually give you uh, all of the absorption of the, uh, sh of the impacts. Pardon me, I got a tongue twister going on there. Uh, actually, there is fluid inside of these shocks that actually, when, when it comes down like this, it helps take away all that pressure and you'll see how it bounces back nice and slow because it's transferring fluid inside these shock reservoirs. So the shocks themselves on both the back and the front, they're going to come down to uh, your suspension arms. A lot of people will call these control arms or A arms, depending on if you're on, like talking about full size or not. Uh, on these, these suspension arms come off. You'll see here's the axle that actually goes into the differential, which is right underneath this plate. You can't really see the differential, but you can see this is a set of gears underneath here, where it's basically a, a set of gears on the inside that are distributing power out each axle in the front and in the back. You also have got the center differential, which is help, helping you distribute the power that's coming off of this motor. Now this is a brushless motor, and I'll get into the differences in just one moment. Uh, this is actually a diff cup. You can see the axle itself is hooked into a diff cup. These axles themselves can actually be called dog bones. And you know why they're called a dog bone? Because they have a pin on both sides that actually fit into that diff cup. 
And the diff cup actually is what is spinning that catches onto these pins and starts rotating that axle, which comes out to the axle stub. The axle stub is going to be right behind this uh, uh, 17 millimeter nut that's right on the end of the hub itself. Now, this tool here is the cross wrench, or what I refer to as a cross wrench. Lots of different names for different things out there, and lots of different uses for something like this. Right now, I'm going to use the 17 millimeter side to actually break free uh, of this wheel nut. There we go. Took a little bit of torque there, not too bad. Remove the wheel nut. There we go, now we can see on the inside and this will actually help identify some parts. Okay, so this is the lower suspension arm, the upper suspension arm, the dog bone or the axle. Back here, this is a, uh, uh, so you can see it right there, this is one of the servo steering arms that comes out to the right side of this truck. We'll get into steering in a second with the servo there, but I wanna show you a few things. Okay, so on here we've got some aluminum pieces. Normally, uh, they're made of plastic. This one's actually a pretty nice quality machine, so we've got some aluminum on here. These uh, are the pillow balls that come out. Uh, basically, they're adjustments for uh, camber, yeah? And what happens is right behind this aluminum piece uh, is a steel ball or aluminum or alloy or whatever they use. And this here is actually used to set that camber adjustment. So you use a big uh, bit in there and this is actually called the steering block or some people refer to it as the spindle. Something that <laughs> is easy to replace. I love the fact, I'm just noticing here, that I've got aluminum back here for my servo arm. Nice and strong, so even if this spindle actually broke, uh, or steering block broke, you could just switch it out, this plastic piece, so that's nice to see. So here are basically some splash guards, or whatever you guys want to call them. Some inner wheel wells, this is also referred to as. You can see the, from the, the, the back differential, the drive shaft or the long dog bone that works its way up into the center differential uh, and the motor mount plate. That's what that red piece is right there is the motor mount plate. What you're looking at there, that gear, the first one, the black one, is a pinion gear that's going on to a center spur gear. And it depends on the model, that's where you're going to find your slipper clutch which is actually just a clutch mechanism, which is two pads that stick together, and the tighter the spring, uh, the, basically it's protecting your transmission for when one of your wheels gets locked up. But we don't have to worry about that. I'll get into that in trail trucks. This is a brushless motor. It's a sensorless brushless motor, and I can tell because there's no sensor wire plugged in on the back. Three motor wires, basically. This is an enormous motor, by the way. I know you guys can't tell the scale size of it, uh, but the motor in the Arma uh, Kraton is enormous. Okay, so moving forward, this is the ESC. Like Ernie, Sam, uh, Chad, <laughs> for lack of better terms. It's actually uh, a, an acronym for electronic speed control. Uh, and this is the on off button right here. This is a waterproof ESC, a waterproof sensorless uh, motor as well. Uh, generally not saying that it's completely submersible, but you can go through the snow and the mud and everything else like that. Not worry too much about it getting, uh, you know, worked in. So this is a power distribution center. Basically, it goes uh, from the battery, it gets plugged in directly to the battery, but still has a signal being sent from the, the uh, receiver, right? Transmitting from here saying, give me power, Brrm, like this. As soon as I push that, this is sending a message over to the receiver that I am giving it throttle input. Because the ESC is plugged into the receiver, the receiver sends a signal to the ESC to distribute power all the way into the motor. And this is exactly how we get the direction uh, of, the, of the car we wanna go. Forward, stop and then reverse. So basically reverse is just reversing the spin of this motor right here. So that is exactly how the battery on the front, if I had a battery in there, would be going through and powering that motor. 
Now this right here, the orange part, brr, is the steering servo. Right here is a steering horn. This is what actually attaches uh, to the splined gear that comes out of a servo. I could show you more about that, I guess. Here is uh, an old servo I have. Here is on top the splined gear. Can you focus? There we go. This is where the steering horn slides on top, gets screwed into place. This is a servo. It has a small motor in there. It actually attaches to the uh, receiver on the inside of the truck, much like how the ESC works. What this is doing when I'm telling it to go right or left is actually telling this servo motor to turn right or left. And because it is hooked up uh, in an engineering genius, <laughs> in, in a great mechanical engineering way, um, this servo horn will actually move left and right, which is actually telling the steering, like this, moving left and right. You can see how that would move. There, that's a better shot. There, now we can really see the mechanical genius of it. So a very strong servo uh, will give you lots of torque and a fast servo mixed in will give you lots of speed. So you can go zip, 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 zip. It's not always good uh, for you, depending on the servo you have, to be manually turning it like this. Uh, some of the plastic gears ones can break very easy. Most of these uh, bigger trucks have metal gears. Now, one of the things I did not touch on uh, are these battery connectors. These are called XT90s. They're actually high current, high flow uh, battery connectors. This actual little loop right here that's in here is actually allowing me to use one battery, or if I wanted to take this out and hook up two batteries for extra power, I can do that. So if I wanted to run one four cell LiPo, uh, I can do that. Or if I wanna run dual three cell LiPos, which means a total of 6S for 22.2 volts of power, I can do that simply by plugging it in the second slot as well. So overall, I hope that helps. We do have uh, basically uh, the back chassis brace here. We do have a center or front chassis brace. Uh, the LiPo batteries will fit up here underneath uh, the battery straps. This whole center brace that you see up here, you must be wondering, is it like a carrying handle? And not so much, you probably could use it for that. But what that's doing is adding extra strength uh, so when this does land upside down eventually, it doesn't just cave in this whole section of the model. In fact, this is a very strong, the way they have it engineered over this center differential or center gear itself is absolutely amazing. So very, very cool. Uh, I love to see this. One of the first times I saw this was on a Savage years and years ago, but so many vehicles have adopted it. In fact, Savage might not have even been first. So overall, that is uh, everything in a nutshell except, you know, little things like this. Here you go, you can have a peek on the inside. See this ring right here? For those that don't know, that is actually a bearing, right? You wanna make sure if you're ever running in water to go in and to oil or grease your bearings with a dedicated uh, bearing grease uh, to help keep them from rusting uh, and to keep everything in fairly good working order. So all turned around looking good. Now the body or the shell or the lid or whatever you want to call it, you now know what it is placed back up on top of my Armacrat. And guys, I know, I hope this was helpful for some of you. Some of you are like, yawn, I already knew all this stuff. Uh, but for all the new people that are just coming into the hobby, welcome. And I hope this video actually helps you identify the top 10 uh, most recognizable pieces on your RC monster truck. Until next time, my friends, go outside and have a good time with RC. You know I am. See you in the next episode of RC Adventures.